around. And then we'll go case solvency, framework, uh, K. Case solvency for new thing. Yeah. Okay, where's solvency? Or case solvency. So just, just case. Oh, just, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, just, we're good. Okay. So is, are all the judges ready? Are you guys ready? Okay. So first, let's talk about what JJ and I are advocating here. We're saying that people in the are literally being present in the status quo. JJ and I hate that they love this cave because it makes him confront the horrible things that happen in the status quo. Basically, a system that allows for a woman to be raped and around, that I have her father slit her throat in front of her sisters out of shame, and then murder his own daughters out of fear of the future is possible of shame. We come in this round to think we are going to lose because we can. We wouldn't get a panel who likes critiques, but we wanted to run this cave anyways because of the audience we get here and the possibility of how to actually make people stop and think about how messed up this shit is. Whoever educates our, our on Patreon best through the analysis of policy action or literally in uh, or, or, or literally in round rhetoric wins this round on the case. First you're gonna cross by Toronto and Royal Antenna and the Rodrigo 11 card that said oh, that open trade liberalization fails to escape the general lens so they can never actually solve the things that they're doing for only because they increase trade policies. That's ridiculous to say that they, you can cross and they completely drop framework cross by Owens over to that methodology comes first just because they can think of like the ways in which they're gonna solve the end is not meaning they can think of the means and who's involved in the ways in which they make decisions and you're gonna cross apply the Peterson and the Tickner and the is common, 07 card, these go completely unrefuted that they aren't even looking at the root cause of their impacts. That's why they can never solve because we actually look at what is going to, like, what is actually causing the app other than the economic embargo. And you're going to extend our turn on intersectionality that one trade policy can solve all of structural violence. Like, the only thing they're going to risk here is serial, serial policy failure because they're saying trying to use the same lens with a different sort of like justification for which how they do it on the framework. Okay, extend Christophus' 05 that this that they, get, they, they make assumptions on what is known. Like we have to assume, like we can't assume that just because like the, the, they, they adopt a different way in which they're gonna uh, embrace the embargo means that they are gonna, gonna be able to solve for all structural violence and feminism. We have to, uh, that's why you're gonna extend that. Uh, the only thing that they replicate is the harms, of, uh, the harms of the case with a better justification of saying that now we have a gendered lens and we're doing the same thing. We're only gonna replicate the same violence with, but with like a Better justification is going to last longer. Extend Tinker and Owen that we that, that we have to embrace methodology first in the round. That's the way in which we're going to access the best sort of education and the way in which people are actually involved in the policy decisions. Like you can't look at just like what's going to happen from a like what's going to happen out of the justification of a plan. You have to look at actually like how we're being implemented and who's implementing it. And that's like the, the key thing that you're going to value in the round because that's how the the perm is not going to solve because they're not looking at how we're doing the plan on the per on the on the. Uh, Okay. Uh, you as a judge must always wait the key before the plan because the book for the app will be grounded in structure uh, of an arbitrary constraints in the universe through the secret criticism through a positive lens. In order to truly understand the piece of possibility, it is largely already mapped and must acknowledge the crisis through a negative lens, acknowledging the context of patriarchal conception that feed militarism is a first step towards reducing their impact and preserving life on Earth. That's our warning tag card from the one end. You're going to prefer our end because it's solve a larger scope of issues that can only, they can only solve impacts directly to the case and take up solvency. Their impacts are over because they ignore the clear correspondence between gender hierarchy and structural violence. Means that not only do the K impacts always outweigh, but they can solve better. The perm does the, okay, the, the alt solves because it employs a bottom-up strategy that avoids seeking to solve the problem through a patriarchal lens. The perm does the opposite and seeks to protect women through the same gender hierarchy, which only adjusts women and reinforces their impacts on the line by line. Extend stable and rector O card, that will, the O5 card from the framework that we as men must talk for the people who are being oppressed. Like, that's where you're going to ignore the ableism card just because, like, we use specific, like, words does not mean that, like, we're trying to solve, like, you have to look at the actual content of the cards. We're actually trying to solve for all the people that are being hurt by patriarchy and structural violence because they're being ignored in the process of, like, how we make policy decisions. Extend intersectionality. That's, it starts at patriarchy. We can't, we can, uh, at, we can identify the root cause of all the issues. That means that we can solve better. Extend framework on how we can't see, uh, on the, on how, that we can't see that they can't see how we view people. They can only see like what we're going to do to make them better, which is only going to doom them in their own harms. Like you're going to extend uh, the Dragon and Cook card and the Blanket card that says the state action so that state action can't solve because it ignores people and only seeks to protect them, which is only going to doom them to the same failures that happened in the past. Extend um, that extend also on the Blanket card that they reproduce the same hierarchy with different ends in the Dragon and Cook card. Um, you're going to extend that. Uh, 
that they're, they're completely ignoring the feminist perspective. They're just going to like say that we can do the plan with like a different way of like looking at it. It's only going to reinforce the same ways in which they're doing things in the past. There's no reason to think that like back when we put the economic embargo, we thought that like maybe it would help people because we're gonna like entrench like the, the Cuban regime and they're gonna like make things better. Like so the way in which they're viewing the way that they're gonna solve is no different than their harm to the case. So that's why you're gonna prefer the alternative every single time because like you're gonna view the, the way that we present in the framework on how we look at uh, methodology and how we look at the ways in which we act, enact our plans and we have to look at the people who we're actually trying to solve for and look at it through their perspective before we can actually claim to solve for how they are being like enact, how they are being impacted in the status quo. Everybody. Yeah. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be the order of the webinar. So case. Okay. So everyone ready? First off, if you're going to read a gender and international relations critique, you should probably read it to an app that actually links to it because we have explicitly stated coming out of the uh, coming out of the one AC that our our cause which et al. O1 evidence specifically indicates that the the uh, Cuban embargo is a form of economic paternalism. That means that we are the link term which they have dropped throughout this entire round. They not they did not mention the link term once. That means that so long as you're voting affirmative, you're actually voting for their their critique as well. Then they say that they came into this round and, and thought that they might not even get a panel that was going to vote for them because they really want to talk about this. Well, we really want to talk about the, the tragedy of the Cuban embargo and how their exact uh, the exact thing that they're critiquing is affecting the world today and why these policies are bad and how to uh, reform them to make them better. Furthermore, so they they, they completely miss the biggest point that they, 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 they keep saying we create zero policy failure and we reinforce the norms. Guess what? They say that the government can never actually take into account a gendered perspective, which means that so long as the government can never take into a gendered perspective, then that means that the, that the government's going to continue acting in a non-gendered perspective, creating the exact violence that they say it creates always there's no chance for solving for the government at all in any instance with their with uh, just their advocacy the perm at least takes a shot at trying to do it furthermore some of our perms actually have advantages to them such as the first firm the united states federal government should remove all economic sanctions against cuba and examine politics with a gendered perspective just their use of ableist language which they brush over and say that it doesn't matter in fact they say you should mark this down because we can't see so like all these reasons are reasons why they they uh, they constitute ableist language all of this ableism is actually uh, is intertwined with things like racism and and sexism in, within the status quo, and uh, in, in fact, gender inequality as well. All these things end up re uh, turning the K because it just recreates the exact harms that they create. And instead of even apologizing or trying to make up for it, they just say it doesn't matter, and then they continue to use it. They continue to use ableist metaphors. We have been going hard on this argument the whole time, and they do not address any of it. They say that the rhetoric matters and that the rhetoric should come first, but nowhere do they actually address the use of their own rhetoric. Furthermore, we are the only instance. Uh, so yeah, so as long as their knowledge production is fundamentally, um, it, yeah, is fundamentally flawed, then that means that like we're going to continue creating the exact impact that they they have. That means there's only the risk of voting affirmative. That means the perm has a net benefit to it. You can guarantee ableism within uh, their thing. The perm actually takes a shot at trying to do it. Furthermore, this is an independent voter. This use of ableist language again not corrected at all throughout the entire round. No, even not even apology. It's just that it doesn't matter. We're going to keep using it because that's what we want. And that just shows you the way in which uh, you can actually have these things co-opted and that they actually end up silencing more and more people. Um, and then uh, furthermore, the perm actually solves the violence that's occurring within the status quo uh, in terms of ableism uh, that they perpetuate and they, they want you to advocate. Um, uh, so that's where the perm function is there. Then um, on the third perm, which is, uh, or sorry, the, yeah, the third perm, uh, which is that the United States government should uh, remove economic sanction against you by examining politics with a gender perspective, basically the same perm, except uh, by doing the affirmative, we actually allow a way in which political institutions uh, continue to have this more uh, liberal ideology and this overall approach towards economics. Exactly what we're saying is that the embargo is an instant, they, they want to criticize all economic engagement at all. That means any, tra any type of economics, including bad economics, is, even gendered economics is something that must stay because apparently it's gendered always and we can't remove those policies because removing them is gendered because it's engaging in economics. This is the exact thing that's wrong and this is why we can't just simply have a discussion but we must take 
concrete action and actually implement policies within the real world in order to help us alleviate these problems. That's why Marxism never took off. It's because people there was a lot of talk about it, but no one wanted to engage in the political institutions. And then by the end of it, we don't see that we've had a Marxist revolution. Instead, what we see is that we've had absolutely nothing change and that there are some people that talk about it, some people that are highly educated that probably could really help change the world. And instead, what they choose to do is just talk about it and discuss it because they refuse to engage in politics. We give you the opportunity to actually engage in politics, which is a much better alternative because it actually solves something through concrete action that will bring about change and make people's lives better, not just thinking about it. Nowhere can they actually claim to solve all these harms within the status quo. All they're doing is talking about how status quo policy and how the government policy within the status quo is bad. That's fine because the perm solves that. If the government is the one to embrace a gendered perspective, then that completely changes the way in which the government functions. It changes the way in which policies are instituted. And by the end of the round, you find that it is still the government who is uh, overall instituting policies that are going to help incorporate this gender perspective, reducing the amount of uh, gender economics that is going to be hurting people in the status quo. And that means that you can only vote affirmative by the end of this round. Thank you so much for judging this round. It's great. Let's open the door so we can get some clear. Yeah. Thank you very much. The full light never came. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's, that one was good. I, it's always my fear when I plug it in, you know, you know anywhere but home, but I'll leave it. Yeah, I gotta get it. You can plug it in. That's true.